Hi, I'd like to talk with you about mobile applications for physical rehabilitation and vocational rehabilitation providers, tools and strategies for managing your work. I'm Tony Gentry, an associate professor at Virginia Commonwealth University's Occupational Therapy Department and the director of the Assistive Technology for Cognition Laboratory there. Today, let's talk about mobile applications that can help those of us who are on the road as rehab therapy providers do our work. This presentation itself uses a pair of useful programs that Apple Mac users may want to try. The first is the onboard application QuickTime Player, which allows you to record video of whatever is happening on your computer screen and save it as a movie. For instance, this video you are watching now. The second is a downloaded application called Reflector available on the Apple website. Reflector allows you to wirelessly mirror the screen of an Apple mobile device, an iPhone, iPod Touch, or iPad, onto your computer screen, which can be really useful in teaching or in building training videos like this one. During this talk, you'll see me switching between a PowerPoint slideshow and a reflector-mirrored image of my iPad as I demonstrate a variety of mobile apps you may find helpful in your work. For those of you who have attended my workshops on the use of mobile devices as cognitive behavioral aids, you already know how useful many of the apps your clients use can be as task management supports in your own work. I'm talking about the fully featured calendar apps like Apple's iCal and Google Calendar, which allow you to build multiple calendars, share them with others, and even send automated text message reminders to phones. The onboard clock and reminders apps on Apple devices are simpler programs that work well as basic reminders and as to-do lists. I think we're all familiar with GPS-based mapping public applications for wayfinding. Did you know you can now use them to map out public transportation, routes, and pedestrian paths through a city, and even through some shopping malls? Also, we have talked about a variety of healthy living applications, and I think all of us could use a meditation or a relaxation app on our phones for those difficult days. We talked about simply being, among others, which can help reduce your client stress, and yours as well, of course. One of the challenges involved in using a tablet as a portable office for those of us on the go is that the most popular tab tablets, iPads and Android-based devices, do not have access to Microsoft Office programs for word processing, presentations, or spreadsheet management. For the past few years, I've been working around that with an app called QuickOffice. The app originally cost about $10, but Google recently bought it and now offers it for free to both Android and Apple mobile users. It works well for creating and editing basic Office documents, though it lacks all the bells and whistles of the Microsoft suite. Let's use Reflector to look at QuickOffice on my iPad screen for a minute. I'm going to switch off PowerPoint, as I mentioned before. And here's mirrored on using AirPlay and Reflector, my, iP my iPad screen. So you can see when you open QuickOffice, I've got here a list of all the documents saved into QuickOffice. Um, and you can see that there, some of them have PDF extensions, there are Excel extensions, there are uh, Word extensions, and there are PowerPoint extensions. Um, using QuickOffice, you can, for instance, on the bottom right, create, create your own document using um, older and newer versions of each of the Microsoft Office files or a general text file. Let's create just a um, basic Microsoft Word document. It opens up a blank page and you can type on it. You can also 
if you like, do a few sorts of formatting things. You can you can bold, and uh, you can ital, you can underline, um, you can undo. Uh, one of the really nice nice choices is you can track changes or make new comments as you want. The same way you can when you're working on a word document. There's a find and replace feature and a word count feature. And you can change fonts and colors uh, if you like to as well. Not a whole lot of fonts, but the basic ones that we use in, off in our office are available to us. Once you're, once you're done with your document, you can tap close, save it as whatever you want to save it as. Once it's saved, once it's saved, you can send it somewhere if you like. So what you do is you tap and hold that document, and at the bottom of the page, you can drop it in the garbage can, you can drop it into email, or you can save it into another program, um, Dropbox or another similar program. Same sort of things work for Excel spreadsheets and for PowerPoint. And really briefly, I want to show you the PowerPoint how-to that pops up that comes with the program. And you can see, I'm going to turn the orientation on the screen to make it more fun. This, this shows how, using QuickPoint, you can use um, different kinds of gestures available on your tablet to get work done in ways that you can't when you're working with a PC. A lot of fun to play with. You can see it has similar features to the uh, Word version. You can insert graphics from your picture file. And it shows you how you can go about pre presenting your slideshow um, either on your tablet itself or transporting it out to another monitor. So that's Quick Office. And um, I just wanted to show it to you because until Microsoft Office becomes available for Android and Apple products, it's going to be the best way I can think of to get our work done using those products. Switching back to my PowerPoint for a minute. I wanted to talk about another really nice Office uh, tool that's available now on our iPhones or on our Android phones. And these are camera-based scanners. I'm a big fan of TurboScan, which is, <clears throat> even at its $1.99 price, I think is worth it. There are free versions of scanners. Uh, Android has a good one called CamScanner, and there's a free Apple scanner called TinyScan. One good thing about the uh, TurboScan app that I like is it's very accurate renderings, uh, including color scans. And because it's so easy to send scan documents to others as PDFs or photos, that sort of thing. To make a phone scanner work, you do have to hold the device very still. Let's turn on um, that, that app for you using Reflector, and I'll show you how that works. So I'm coming back out of PowerPoint again. And here's what TurboScan looks like on screen. What I'm going to do is take a picture of a recipe. I've, turned, I've tapped the, the camera and you can see the recipe shows up. I'm going to try to hold this as still as I can and snap the picture. When you do that you'll see that the recipe appears as a preview page and if you want to you can you can tap photo or color to get it in black and white or color. doesn't matter for this because there really isn't any color to the picture. We'll keep it in black and white. And you can increase, if you want to, the contrast. Once, you, once you're comfortable with that, you can save the page. If you, you can add another page. If there were, if there were going to be a, a multiple page document, I could do that here. And I can decide what uh, I can give it a name, decide what size this document's going to be when I send it, and if I want to, I can add a date stamp. Once that's done, I just tap 
where I want to send it. And these are the options you have to send a scan document. Since I got TurboScan, I have not used a fax machine once. Really nice for sending therapy exercise plans to clients as well. I think most of us have heard of Evernote. It's been around as long as uh, the iPhone has. Um, and I'm not going to demonstrate it, but I will tell you that uh, this app has quickly become an indispensable catch-all for my digital documents, uh, notes, images, um, anything digital across all your devices gets shared. So, And what's really nice about that is that you can find them with a really robust search function. You don't have to put them into files. They're all available for you through search. And you just put them into files when you feel like it. If you're on the go and you've got an idea or you see something cool that you want to take a picture of or you just have a minute to jot down an audio note, Evernote is there for you. For both Apple and Android devices, it's free. Like Evernote, Dropbox has become an indispensable cross-platform, cloud-based storage bin for my digital files. If you go over 2 gigabytes of storage, you have to pay, but boy is it worth it. I have home and office computers and other stuff stored on my iPad and my iPhone, and that's a recipe for having to drive to the office in the middle of the night to find that document that's stored only on my office hard drive. But if everything is stored on Dropbox, it's available to all your devices all the time. That's a huge time saver. There are other cloud-based hard drives available. Google Drive, CX, and SugarSync are good ones. Uh, for me so far, I've been happy with Dropbox. Let me introduce you to a couple of note-taking apps that work well for client visits and for meetings. Penultimate is free. You can sketch on screen with your finger or a stylus. Save what you've written as a PDF or a JPEG. You can drag in photos and other sorts of things. It's a lot more fun and more versatile, I think, than just typing on a glass screen. Notability, sometimes as low as $2.99, allows you to draw, type, add photos, and annotate. You can pull in PDFs <coughs> and other documents to, that you can notate directly on the screen. But its coolest feature is its lecture recording function. Let me show you how this app works on my iPad. Close out TurboScan. And let's open up Notability. So what you see here is I've pulled in a PDF of a handout from one of my talks. Uh, and I recorded a part of that talk here when I can get it to play back just by tapping it. Okay, I'm having a problem with the audio. There we go. iPod Touch and iPad, and the growing catalog of Android and Microsoft tablets are remarkably versatile and agile tools that have taken the consumer world by storm. So, any, you can just by hitting that microphone, you can record anything that you want, a lecture, or as I said, a client visit. And if you bring in a PDF that goes along with it, sort of a handout, you can annotate the handout while the lecture is going on. For instance, if I want to, I tap the plus sign up here. I can pull a photo in from my files. Just for the heck of it, I'll pull in one of my family at the beach. You can resize that photo and drag it to where you want it to go. Another thing, if you like, if you like to, you can add a sticky note, uh, which you can type or draw on. Let's type one, and let's put it right there. 
what about Android? And again, we can resize that and move that somewhere else if we want. If you want to also, you can highlight text that seems reasonable. So you've got a really nice highlighter. I'm just drawing with my finger along this highlighting line. You can also have a pencil to take notes yourself as you go. You can edit, cut, cut and paste. So let's cut and paste all of this. And once you've done that, you can drag it where you want it to go. I'm putting it down at the bottom of the screen. You can also type anything you want anywhere you want. So that, that's some, some of the editing functions that are available to you in Notability, and it's really a lot of fun to take a shot of using when you're on a client visit or when you're uh, just attending a lecture or going to a meeting. What I won't show you in the interest of time is may, what may be Notability's most powerful feature and most fun feature for really, um, and that is if you are recording a long lecture or a meeting and taking notes as you go, you can go back to the note later, tap anywhere on the page, and the audio will launch right where the speaker was speaking when you scribble that note. Saves a lot of time because you don't have to scroll through Blather to get to the point you're after. If you've seen the live scribe pens, you know how that works. Here's an app that does the same thing as a live scribe pen. Many of us need to keep track of bills, invoices, and timesheets. Houreskeeper for both Apple and Android is free and does a good job of organizing all of those things. By the same token, Mile Tracker for Apple or TripLog for Android allow you to keep track of mileage, gas purchases, and other expenses on a road trip, pegged to a particular date or client. Houreskeeper and Mile Tracker both allow you to print or email reports, and Mile Tracker can even link to your phone's GPS tracker to automatically record actual miles driven automatically if you want it to. That's pretty cool. I'd be remiss not to discuss some of the free tools we have available now for making long distance phone calls and video chats. If you have Wi Fi and a mobile device with Skype or with Apple FaceTime, you can do that free. If you call a landline, you get charged a small fee. And if you are out of Wi-Fi range, you use cellular minutes. But in every case, this is probably cheaper than making a long distance call any other way. I'm a huge user of my phone's video and still camera. I take a photo of my car in the mall parking lot so I can find it later. I take pictures during home modification visits do video chat with clients. If you've attended my talks, you've heard me talk about building task sequencing, wayfinding, and behavioral cueing videos for clients. And on the road, calling home to my teenagers who speak only in monosyllables on the phone. Well, a video call where I can see their faces, that's worth a million words. I'm going to wrap up this chat sort of where I began with a healthy living app recommendation. The folks at T2 who build all sorts of behavioral apps for military veterans and others have come up with one for us. It's called Provider Resilience. It's free and as you can see on these screenshots the app is designed for you to rate your own mood, your own stress, even your days since vacation to come up with a provider burnout rating. And the app offers some cognitive behavioral based therapy to help you cope. I love that days since vacation monitor. Well, these are 10 or so apps that can help you do your work. I'm sure you know of and use others. So please share here.